Uh, Your Excellencies, uh, Daniela, thank you very, very much for the very kind words. Uh, on behalf of uh, Jana, Nada, Majdalani and myself, um, I'm really honored to be able to uh, announce, in fact, the, the release of our, of our new report on a green-blue deal for the Middle East. Uh, it's truly inspired by the leadership of Europe, by uh, the European Commission's uh, European uh, uh, Green uh, Deal report, and it's equal, equally inspired today by President-elect Biden and his commitment uh, uh, to fight climate change and to bring the United States back uh, onto the global agenda uh, to help save this planet from uh, the risks that climate change uh, presents. However, like the uh, ambassador opened at EcoPeace, uh, we're not uh, willing to just focus on uh, the threat multiplier aspects that indeed the climate crisis presents. We're uh, keen to focus on the multiplier of opportunities that uh, the climate crisis can equally present if we uh, change our mindset accordingly. So let me uh, share now uh, on the uh, screen, a PowerPoint presentation. Um, that, that first and foremost uh, uh, highlights to us that um, uh, the MENA region, the Middle East, North Africa region um, is the most water scarce part of uh, the planet. There is no other uh, region that suffers from more water insecurity than the Middle East, North Africa region. Sadly, it's also a region where there are, there are the uh, longest ongoing conflicts in the world. Now, that's not to say that there's a direct correlation, but there is lots of evidence um, of a indirect correlation between water insecurity and conflicts in the MENA region. Then when we look at uh, the uh, situation of, uh, of climate change and the models, this is a model um, partly produced uh, uh, by Tel Aviv University in Israel um, that highlights the dire situation that the climate crisis will bring uh, to the Eastern Mediterranean. Um, the middle graph shows us that uh, by the middle of the century, we will have no rainfall. We can expect no rainfall in the autumn months and rainfall will only start in the, in the January to, uh, to March period each year. And then if we look down towards the end of the century, then we have great reason for further alarm because we see our already uh, extensive summer period doubled and uh, 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 high, you know, um, uh, more extensive days of great heat that could turn parts of our region to areas that are, that are not livable. Um, we are completely interconnected. And this satellite image that uh, we're sharing here uh, highlights that uh, we can't uh, uh, disengage from each other as neighbors. Uh, this satellite image shows organic matter um, when electricity fails for whatever reason in Gaza, conflict otherwise then there's a hundred million liters of sewage that is no longer treated and pours into the Mediterranean and it pollutes uh, the beaches of Gaza, but it's also carried with the currents up the stream to Israeli beaches as well. Um, and it's partly responsible for the intermittent closure of uh, Israel's Southern desalination plant at, at Ashkelon. And what this satellite image is, is trying to uh, highlight is that we are one region and the impacts of, uh, of climate change will be felt region wide. And there's no way for us to prevent those impacts despite the ability of one or more countries to be uh, a more resilient if our neighborhood as a whole remains uh, volatile and, uh, and subject to the harsh implications of climate change, then we all will suffer and we all will pay a heavy price. The typical 
geopolitical map of the region fails to show the natural, one of the natural borders of our region. And these are the borders of our watersheds. And they highlight that the political borders are somewhat irrelevant because the watersheds don't respect any of the political borders. You cannot see, uh, you cannot make a difference between uh, Israel and Gaza, Israel and the West Bank, and even uh, the West Bank and Jordan or Israel and Jordan. Um, we're one integrated uh, ecosystem. And if we don't start to understand that and behave in such a manner, then uh, uh, we will indeed all pay a heavy price, a heavy cost uh, 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 due to climate change. Now, the report that um, uh, we're uh, releasing today on a, on a Green Blue Deal uh, builds on uh, the critical natural resources of our region at a regional level and proposes four concrete projects with policy recommendations to move from a threat multiplier situation to a multiplier of opportunities. And we're really uh, uh, honored uh, to uh, uh, here present the first proposal, which is the creation of a Jordanian Israeli Palestinian water energy exchange. And this is a, 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 a builds on the study that the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung had actually uh, supported Ecopeace uh, in a pre feasibility study. And it highlights that Jordan has the comparative advantage in the region because of its vast desert areas to produce renewable energy, solar energy at prices that are truly competitive um, and uh, can then sell part of that solar uh, electricity to her neighbors, to Israel and Palestine. That uh, uh, we can uh, on the Mediterranean coast benefit from the renewable energy to uh, power desalination plants, desalination plants that already exist in Israel um, and that uh, urgently need to be built also uh, on the Palestinian Gaza, uh, Gaza coast um, and, and then sell both Israeli and Palestinian desalinated water back to Jordan. And in that way, create healthy interdependencies between our countries that indeed as the ambassador mentioned earlier, exemplify both uh, climate mitigation and climate adaptation. And in the process can produce water security for all three uh, peoples, energy security for all three peoples and integrate our, econo our economies in such a manner that the electricity sold uh, uh, by Jordan can enable Jordan, in fact, to buy all the water it needs and vice versa for Israel and Palestine. Now, this concept is, has not come from thin air. This concept is deeply uh, inspired by the experience, again, of Europe in uh, uh, post-World War II and uh, the establishment of a coal and steel agreement, where coal and steel, the key uh, and natural resources of continental Europe last century were integrated in such a manner that allowed Europe to prosper like, uh, 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 like Europe is today. Well, what's relevant uh, according to the study that, that, that we completed um, for the uh, uh, Eastern Mediterranean is harnessing the sun and the sea as the critical natural resources that Again, if we can create through healthy interdependencies, uh, help us bring uh, stability to our region. And we see uh, many of the investments taking place. These are uh, existing, the, the dark blue are existing desalination pl uh, plants uh, along the Israeli coast that today produce 70 to 80% of the drinking water of the Israeli public. And you can see the plans of only in, in Israel to triple by 2050, the amount of desalination to be uh, to come to 1.8 billion cubic meters. But that uh, water uh, security that's been achieved in Israel is very much missing still in, uh, in Palestine, in the West Bank and Gaza. 
the center photo is a photo that, that really reflects desperation, where two million Palestinians in Gaza have gone back to the Middle Ages, not out of uh, their choice, but because of the demise of the uh, aquifer underneath Gaza, um, uh, partly conflict, partly management, partly overpopulation. But uh, irrespective of blame, the reality on the ground is that people can no longer drink the water under their feet and are having to be dependent on small desalination plants or water imported from Israel um, and fill jerry cans in order to drink and cook with. The situation in the West Bank is better, but still of great concern in areas um, in the West Bank where uh, throughout the West Bank, there's intermittent water supply. And, and for, the, for the broader public, it's important to understand that that means that when you turn on the tap, you can't always expect that water is going to flow, that municipalities do not provide water in the pipes 24 seven. In the Southern part of the West Bank in particular, in the Hebron and the Yatta area, water could be supplied once a month. In some cases in, in, the, in deep summer, uh, once every two or three months. And therefore people truly need to get by with tremendous conservation and we're in a COVID crisis. We're in a crisis where everyone needs water to maintain basic hygiene. And like the climate crisis, it also doesn't respect borders. So this is not just the interest of one side that we all have uh, obtained water security. It's the interest of all sides. And also in, the, in, in, in relation to uh, pollution and, and uh, 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 sewerage failing to be treated, not only in Gaza, but also in the West Bank, mostly in, in Palestinian communities, but also Israeli settlements that pollute the shared groundwater that is scarce from the outset. And our second uh, proposal uh, as part of uh, the opportunity that a, uh, a green blue deal presents is that it's time to change the Israeli-Palestinian water paradigm. The Oslo Accords, which led to water being identified as a final status issue to be resolved together with other final status issues um, uh, is, is, no, is no longer relevant today. Water was at that time only natural water. Today, with the advance of technology mostly led in Israel, um, uh, and uh, desalination, as we've seen, being a game changer. A fair share of the natural water shared by Israelis and Palestinians can be advanced to the Palestinian side so that Palestinians can obtain their water rights without any Israelis today losing water. That was not the case in 95. That is the case today. Yet, Water is in fact being held hostage by the paradigm, by the political paradigm um, of uh, our own governments and to some extent the international community of sticking to either agreeing on everything or not agreeing on anything. So at Equipeace we're calling to let's remove ourselves, let's take the opportunity that the climate crisis presents and uh, truly bring uh, water security to Palestinians, first and foremost, uh, by Palestinians obtaining their water, uh, their, their, their water rights to the natural waters shared without any losers on the Israeli side. The, th the third aspect of the Green Blue Deal uh, proposal very much relates to nature, to biodiversity that was mentioned. This is today what the Jordan River looks like on the left photo, with 95% of its waters diverted, with 50% of its biodiversity lost. A river holy to half of humanity that through our own actions, through the competition of the conflict, um, has, uh, has uh, turned into little more than a sewerage canal. And with consequences for this other iconic lake called the Dead Sea, shrinking at over a meter in depth every year. Well, as we heard also 
um, uh, uh, from uh, our uh, er earlier speakers, um, uh, the Jordan, uh, uh, the Jordan Valley Master Plan that Ecopeace uh, developed is another opportunity to turn around demise into shared prosperity, to stop using uh, national water carriers, uh, canals and pipes to grab water for each side, but to turn back to the Jordan River as the regional water carrier, being able to supply uh, both domestic and agricultural water needs for our three peoples and in the process, rehabilitating the river itself and creating lots of green jobs and moving uh, the economy of the valley from an economy of poverty at present of only four uh, US dollar, four billion US dollars annually to a 73 US billion dollar economy. If we cooperate, if we uh, bring the Jordan River back to life. The uh, fourth and final aspect of, of the Green Blue Deal relates to education and builds on the, the need to educate our young people about uh, climate change, about water, food, and energy security. Now, we're doing that uh, with, the, uh, with the support of our, of our funders, and in this case in particular, uh, with support of, uh, of the uh, Swedish International Development Agency through the Good Water Neighbors Program, but it's not enough. We need uh, to have every Palestinian, Jordanian, Israeli, Middle East child better understand the relations of uh, climate change and our key resource and national security interests. And by raising the voices, and as many of you saw, we have young Gretas, Israeli, Palestinian, and Jordanian, who are raising their voice and are leading to many of our decision makers, you can see some of the mayors in the photo of the, uh, on the right, Palestinian, Jordanian, Israeli mayors jumping into the Jordan River together. We, we're gonna hear today um, uh, leadership um, uh, from uh, 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 the former Palestinian uh, water minister, uh, the head of the uh, Israeli uh, Knesset committee uh, on uh, environmental issues and uh, also from Jordan, but we need further investment in public education um, in order to try and advance green deals nationally in each one of our countries. And then finally, um, although we've been able to take many of these proposals to the highest quarters, and last year, um, uh, Nada, Jan and myself had the honor to be invited by the German president of the UN Security Council on the photo on the left to present some of these concepts. And then later in the year, uh, we were invited to present our work before the UN Secretary General's Climate Summit, where um, uh, we had the opportunity uh, to present again some of our work uh, to His Excellency um, uh, Mr. Pekka Harvester, the Foreign Minister of Finland, who will also be speaking uh, 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 following my presentation. Um, although we've been able to uh, uh, bring global attention to some of these issues. For the first time in the launch of this call for a green blue deal for the Middle East, um, uh, we feel that we're in a, a perfect situation to align uh, the, the policies of uh, 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 climate change as espoused by the European Union, as espoused by the new Biden administration that will come to play, with also the, uh, the policies of the international community uh, uh, towards a two-state solution, to see a state of Palestine and a state of Israel living side by side in peace and integrated with the other uh, countries in our region, first and foremost, Jordan, as an example of both uh, uh, climate mitigation and climate uh, adaptation and in conditions where we can build trust that's so desperately needed to help us move forward on all of the other critical aspects of, of the peace process. So the Green Blue Deal 
is in our eyes an opportunity, an opportunity to move forward on these two critical agendas that are very much aligned with our own interests and the interests of the global community. Thank you very much, Abed. Back to you.